Hey, it's Ryan. We're going to continue our discussion about one-dimensional motion, only instead of being horizontal, it will be vertical. And when, when that's the case, we have to deal with a new form of acceleration, namely the acceleration due to gravity. Gravity is uh, a very broad uh, word that is often misused in the public eye, and, and really we need to specify when we're talking about gravity which attribute of gravity that we're talking about. And we're going to start our discussion, our first discussion on gravity with the acceleration due to gravity. And it really is an incredible, mind-blowing phenomenon that exists here on Earth, and that is that everything at the surface of Earth is accelerated toward the surface of Earth at the same rate. Somehow or another, Earth seems to reach out through space and time and accelerate any body near it at the same exact rate. And so we call that the acceleration due to gravity. And more importantly, we'll use a, sp a very special symbol uh, it's an acceleration, so it's a vector, and our symbol is a lowercase g, or the vector over it, and it's defined as the acceleration due to gravity, of course. And we'll say at the surface of the Earth, so we're going to use a constant value for our class, at the surface of the Earth, and we'll give you that g equals 9.81 meters per second squared toward the center of the Earth. So notice I didn't put a negative sign in there, but I did tell you that it's toward the center of the Earth. So if we are doing a problem and toward the center of the Earth happens to be the negative direction, then we would use a negative 9.81 meters per second squared. But in general, this is always the acceleration that everything on Earth experiences at the Earth's surface. It really is kind of mind-blowing, and you really should take a moment and experiment with, with this a little bit. Take several different objects with clearly different masses, and see if they accelerate at the same rate, if you were to just drop them and let them fall toward the ground. Now, I don't advise you to do this with anything breakable. For example, the glass that you're drinking water from, don't do that, but maybe a pen and a crumpled up piece of paper or a book and uh, a tennis ball, you know, two very different bodies. But notice that the Earth will always reach out and accelerate it toward the center. Anyway, if you do try that, something you could try is to take a piece of paper flat and drop it, and that same piece of paper crumpled up and drop it. And now you'll notice that it does seem to accelerate at different rates. We're not going to get very deep into that yet, but what we will say is that 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 change doesn't happen in physics land. So I'm going to note, in our examples, we live in a place called physics land, or we exist in physics land. Physics land is a weird and wondrous place and it will be where we exist for many of our problems. The point really is that unless I tell you otherwise in our class, you're just going to ignore things like air resistance, okay? But we'll definitely talk more about that when we get to dynamics, which will begin in chapter uh, four, I think. I don't know. When we start to do forces. Okay. So the reason I'm introducing the acceleration due to gravity in a mathematical sense is that I'm going to define for you something called free fall motion.
In free fall motion is any time a body is only being acted on by the acceleration due to gravity. So the way I'm going to write that is any time a body is moving vertically under only the influence of the acceleration due to gravity that body is in free fall motion. So we're still doing one-dimensional motion here, but instead of being horizontal, where we have varying accelerations, now we know that a body falling through the air will have a constant acceleration of a downward pointed 9.81 meters per second squared. The best way to do this is to just work through an example. So I've had a lot of classes in the past, and I always ask my class uh, if anyone in the class has fallen off a roof. And I'm not going to lie, every single semester, somebody raises their hand. Uh, it's often how I'll find an SI. But anyway, uh, this will be our third example uh, in one-dimensional motion, but it's our first example of... Uh, motion being accelerated by the acceleration due to gravity. So this is kind of a new set of examples. So this will be a, uh, we'll say, the acceleration due to gravity, example one. And we'll note that it's free fall motion. OK. So last semester, I had a student, well, two semesters, I guess, ago, I had a student named Kareem, and he was the one who fell off his roof. So we're going to use him in this example. We'll say Kareem fell off a two-story building. This is a true story, and Kareem's okay. So anyway, let's determine... Let's determine Kareem's impact velocity. So when we say impact velocity, we mean the velocity, the instant before Kareem met the ground. So that's what we're going to do. This is an example of free fall motion. And so when Kareem fell off the roof, he started with an initial velocity of zero. He didn't jump toward the earth. That would be a little bit different than falling, wouldn't it? So anyway, we're going to start like we start any problem by drawing a picture. So let's draw a picture. A two-story... Oh, by the way, we could note uh, a story, one story. That's approximately three meters. So we actually know the height that... Kareem fell from. So our picture will have the building, story one, story two, and the door. And we can have Kareem up there. Kareem can be, uh, I don't know, we'll make him blue. And he fell accidentally, of course, right off the roof. So we could note that his initial velocity was zero. We could also show that he's going to be right here, right before impacting the ground. That's the velocity we want. So there will be some final velocity here. And we could also draw the ground. We could note that uh, this building has some height h. And we could say that this is his initial position. And this is at t uh, equals 0, 2. 
And so down here will be his final position. Seems a little excessive, but it really will help in the long run when we get to some more complicated problems. We also definitely need to show the acceleration. Well, it's the acceleration due to gravity, so it's toward the Earth. Just ask Kareem. And G is the symbol we use for that. So that's about everything. So let's go ahead and do our knowns and unknowns. So we know V sub O is zero. We have to make a decision soon. We either have to say that the initial position, S sub O, is equal to the height of the building, and that the final position is equal to a zero height. That's usually what people do. That's usually how you think about falling off a roof. So I think that's what we'll do today. But you could always say that you start at zero, and you end at h, and then downward would just be representing a positive direction. But I'm going to go ahead and say that s sub o is equal to the height of the building, and s final is equal to 0. So we're saying that down here is a 0 height, or a 0 on our axis. That means that our acceleration due to gravity is going to be negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And it's in the y direction. The y direction, we use a j hat to represent that. OK, and we do not know the final velocity. That's what we're looking for, which we've actually called the impact velocity. So I'll write it like that, v impact. So those are knowns and unknowns. So we know we're looking for V impact. So let's go ahead and, and write uh, out the big three. And this time, since we've already done a couple examples using the time independent equation, and to start building a habit that we're going to have to use by the time we get to something called projectile motion, we're going to use the other two. But here we go. The big three. So there they are in all their glory. And now we're not going to use the time independent. I'm just starting us off knowing that. We're going to go ahead and utilize these two equations to solve. And again, this is may seem a little bit um, like extra work, but it, it's really what we're going to end up having to do most of the time. And so it's just good to get some practice in. So I'm going to rewrite these equations, and I'm going to substitute any zeros that I have in there. So we're going to start like this, rewriting the equations. And now I'm going to input any zeros from my knowns and unknowns. So here we have v sub o is 0. So wherever there's a v sub o, I'm going to go ahead and say that that's 0. And v sub o is 0. Well, what's 0 times t? Well, that's still 0. So I'm going to cross out this whole term. And v sub o here is 0. We uh, can't really get rid of much else. We did say that s sub o is h. We could put in h, and we know that a is going to be g, so we could put these little changes in here, but can't really get rid of anything else yet. So now, it, before even really thinking about it, I'm just going to rewrite these equations without my zeros. So we have s equals 1 half g t squared plus h, and I have v equals g t. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what we know and don't know. We know that, well, it looks like we know uh, we're looking for V impact. So let's start here. So let's not 
overthink this. We want V impact, so V impact happens at T impact, but we don't know how long it takes for that poor soul to get to the ground. Seriously, he's okay. He was in my class, so he must be okay. Uh, so we need to figure out what T impact is, is the point. So using this equation, we know that T impact happens at S final, and S final was zero because we chose S initial to be H, so S final was zero. Okay, so now we could solve this equation for T impact. I'll subtract H. We'll multiply by 2, divide by G, and square root. And now we can take this and substitute it in here. So V impact equals G times the square root of negative 2H over G. Uh, just for funsies, uh, this algebraically is the same as square root of 2gh. Well, there's a negative still, but if you wanted to test your algebra skills, you could show that. Anyway, uh, now we can substitute our values. So g is negative 9.81 meters per second squared times the square root of negative 2 times h, which was a two-story building, so one story is 3 meters, that means it's 9 meters. And we'll divide by the negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And if we multiply this all out, we would get approximately, uh, almost exactly, oh, wait a minute, I, I screwed up, I'm sorry. This is where the class would have to catch me. 2 times 3 is not 9, it's 6. Okay, anyway, so V impact is equal to, uh, it looks like in here the negatives will turn to 1, so we'll have be able to do the square root still, and we have a negative left over in front, so we'll have a negative answer, and we get about 11 meters per second. And it's in the y direction, so we'll go ahead and remember to put our j hat on there. You could also answer this v impact equals 11 meters per second uh, downward. That would be fine. You could say at 270 degrees. You could say toward the center of the earth. As long as you give magnitude and direction, right? So that's it. Have any of you fallen off of a building before, a two-story building like your house? Did it feel like you were going 11 meters per second when you collided with Mother Earth? Wait a minute, how fast is 11 meters per second really? So here's a trick. If you double it and then add 10%, double it, 22, add 10%, so about 2.5 five or whatever. So you're looking at about uh, 24 and a half. So we'll say 25 miles per hour. So 11 meters per second is approximately 25 miles per hour. Now, when you fall off your roof, that feels really fast when you collide with the ground. But when you're driving in the car in the subdivision going 55 because 25 miles an hour is too darn slow, maybe you should think about this the next time that you're experiencing that. If you fell off a roof, you're going to end up going about 25 miles an hour, and you don't want to do that. So when you're going 25 miles an hour in your car, it might not be as slow as, it's, as we've grown to feel. Anyway, that's a fun example on a, on a free fall motion. And it's the last example for one-dimensional motion we're going to do.